r slash ask reddit. What is something normal that scares the hell out of you? Let's each stand up and introduce ourselves and say one interesting thing about ourselves. I'm Bob and I try to kill one random person every week. Is today Tuesday? And as I try to rehearse my intro and get my facts right I realize I'm boring and have zero likes and interest. My intro and facts sound amazing and cool while they're in my head. Once I open my mouth, I realize how stupid they are. Unexpected knocking on my door. I have nothing to hide, all my bills are paid, but for some reason I get a mild panic attack when someone knocks. It actually evokes immediate anger in me. I have to calm my face before I open the door. Feels like such an intrusion on my day. Knock, knock. Who dares knock at this hour? 1 p.m. As someone with toddlers, this is nap time. You dare knock between 1 and 4, and I will get so mad. Delivery person here, put a sign on your door slash doorbell. We don't want to wake your babies, we just have a lot to do. Putting my hand into the garbage disposal to clear it. No one else allowed in the kitchen, because I know they'll somehow turn it on. My wife broke a glass in the sink once, and it went in the garbage disposal. Clearing broken glass I couldn't see was the stupidest thing I've ever done. Lol I'm fine with that, as long as nobody is anywhere near the switch. But my Finn K is terrified of it too, so he'll ask me to do it every time. I had to hire a handyman to install our dishwasher a few months ago. This older guy comes, reminded me a ton of my dad. So he hooks up the hoses and tells me he needs to pop a little plastic cap out of our disposal to hook the debris line to it. But he can't stick his hand in to get the cap out because he's terrified of sticking his hand in. So I tell him I'm cool with it. So he pops it from the outside and tells me to go for it while he feels around the hole to make sure it came out. Our hands brushed and he screamed so loud and high that even I jumped a good foot up in the air. We both just started dying of laughter and had to take a break for a while for his heartbeats to drop back to normal. Edit, both our garbage disposal and dishwasher are wired into the electric so there is no plugging slash unplugging them. My Fim K wasn't willing to mess with wiring the new dishwasher in as it was cloth wiring. Hence hiring a handyman. Our house is 150 years old and has been wired three times, so each room has about four or five breakers, which also connect to other rooms and turn off random outlets. The handyman had to flip quit a few to find and turn off the dishwasher wires, so I guess he just didn't want to find the garbage disposal wires. And logically he probably knew neither of us would flip the switch with our hands in it, but it was just a scare to have something move in the disposal while his fingers were in it. If I wasn't working on a waste disposal right now then this would be hilarious. Interviews. Them, tell us about yourself. Me, um, I, I. Still don't know how I got the job. Take it a notch further, group interviews. Like, it's already hard enough to try to sell yourself to someone you've never met in the hopes of being able to support yourself, but then they make you sit with a whole bunch of people you don't know, and then you have to try to one-up the other people too? I've only done a couple of group interviews and surprisingly enough, didn't get the job for either. I just completely can't think of any way to be authentic when I'm surrounded by strangers and have to market myself with their beady little judgy eyes watching me. Don't know if this counts as normal but mental illnesses. The fact that your own brain can turn on you and create a reality different from the rest of us scares the shit out of me. Growing up in a very neurotic family, my biggest fear was that I was like them and lacked the ability to see myself and the world clearly. It was sort of like my mum is in complete denial that she has severe BPD and PTSD, her memories change depending on what she wants to remember, what if I'm the same and just don't know it? I basically gaslit myself. I have a mental illness, depression, and it feels less like I don't have touch with reality and more like my mind is constantly trying to betray me. 
Not in the sense of hallucinations or anything, but more like it has negative thinking patterns that lead to downward spirals into despair, seared into my brain flesh. I can see the road just fine, but my car wheel pulls significantly, and it has taken years to learn how to manage it. Aging. The thought of getting to a point where I won't be able to take care of myself anymore scares the living daylights out of me. I'm much less scared of dying than I'm of outliving my ability to do anything. People think I'm crazy when I tell them I don't want to live past 75. See the problem I have with this idea is that by the time I'm 75 who knows what the world will look like. My grandma is 86 now, and she's 100% the person to have agreed with you when she was young. No way she'd want to have missed the last decade though. She loves her great grandchild and, and she's also still mobile enough to do the things she's always liked doing. I agree with the sentiment, but who knows what science will have thought of by the 2060s. I have an irrational fear that someone will break in and steal my parrot whenever I leave my house. That means you love your parrot alert which is good. Or they don't own a parrot. That's why the fear is irrational. Give it a knife that looks real, but you know, is fake and or dull. It would definitely stop me from messing with it. It being a parrot is enough to stop me. They can be mean. I like my fingers. All of them. Mirrors in a dark room. Like if you turn the light off in the bathroom, before leaving or something. Fun fact, if you were to ever see something in the mirror, it's because your brain is trying to fill in what's there, based on a low stimulus, I think. It's called pareidolia, and is why we see faces in objects, and flowers or animals in clouds. I have a mirror in my bedroom and every night, when I stay up late I see something in it, but when I look directly at it, it disappears kinda creepy, lol, but I try to ignore it. This is gonna sound weird, but seeing things in the middle of the road at night. I was once driving home one night and turn a corner, to see a dog in the middle of the road. Nothing weird right? Completely normal sight in a suburb. Every instinct in my body was telling me to get the duck out of there now. When I see stuff in the middle of the road at night it doesn't matter what it is, I get chills, goosebumps, my ears stand on end and my palms sweat. It's happened with deer, dogs, people, raccoons, and even a trash can once. Can't explain it, but it terrifies me. Oh me god I get this too. I think it has something to do with the fact that it's not supposed to be there, and when we see things we aren't supposed to our brains respond. Teeth or more specifically, a medical problem with teeth. For me or anyone else, just creep me out. Edit, this was a bad idea, now everyone is telling me their terrible teeth story, please kill me. Dreams where my teeth fall out are the worst. Since I have many dental issues I'm so self aware about my teeth it gets annoying. I also can't stand when my dentist's friends share something on social media concerning teeth with a photo, even if it's a whitening before and after picture. Space. Just looking up and coming to terms with how big it is, and how little we know about it. Don't think of it as looking up, think of it as looking down into an infinite void, a true bottomless pit. That helps. Not. Now I'm staring into this bottomless void all the time. Thanks. Peer into the void and the void peers into you. The void has eyes. When cockroaches starts to fly. The problem is not when they appear, it's when they disappear. Muffled buzzing behind the drawer. You know it's there, but can you catch it in time? Will it fly straight at your face, if you move the drawer? Will it rush under the bed? As I was reading this, the alarm on my phone went off, and suddenly popped onto the screen and I almost died. Grasshoppers. They just are too unpredictable, and it terrifies me. Frogs kind of too for the same reason, but not as bad. I feel this way about butterflies. 
They are pretty and harmless but something about the way they fly makes me eat myself away when they are near me. You're the first person I've seen to share this fear. They are creepy little duckers when they get too close. Closing my eyes when shampooing. I've seen too many horror movies to enjoy darkness. It's an endless cycle. You close your eyes and lather your face as quick as possible, but you go too fast and open your eyes and now your eyes burn. So you close your eyes and go back under the water stream and you do it all again. The ocean. I'm talking like out in the ocean, hundreds of miles from land, treading water, alone. Also, spiders. You would hate my sleep paralysis spiders. I'll just input my related spider fear when they just appear on the curtains after looking at them not too long ago, meaning they were in the folds. Had that shit happen few months ago when I was getting cozy in bed. Still afraid of that happening again. Subnautica made me afraid of the deep. I've never cared for the ocean, grew up in a landlocked state, or any body of water that I can't see where my feet land. In rivers, I prefer to just swim, no matter how shallow the water is, if I can't see where my feet are landing. But I'm not scared of deep water in rivers, those are actually my favorite spots. Really not scared of rivers at all, just freaked out, if I touch a wet log cause do, ugh, eep. But that game made me terrified of deep water and the ocean. Absolutely petrified. I quite playing, even though I really like it, because of the near panic attacks I would get playing it. Kinda weird but, when audio starts skipping, when in playing my music, it scares me shitless. Totally agree. Instant anxiety kicks it for sure. Big something's wrong energy. Public speaking. My friends didn't really understand what a fear of public speaking meant till I showed them on my Fitbit how my heart was racing to about 150 bpm because I had to give a speech for an election that I was running unopposed in. Like this shit is real. Did you win? It was an emotional defeat, but I ended up with the position. The sound of someone riding a skateboard on the sidewalk behind me. I don't know why, but I freeze. I would like to app trucks. When I'm walking on a sidewalk and hear a truck coming up behind me, I die a little on the inside. To be honest, I think we'd all be scared if we heard a truck directly behind us on a sidewalk, since they shouldn't be there. Phone calls, especially if it's not a number from my contact list. If it's important they can leave a message. I'm doing it right now. Learning to drive. Especially because I'm taking lessons, and after my lesson tomorrow, I'm gonna be on the highway and my lessons have a tendency to be really close together. Once you've been driving for a few years it becomes a mundane, second nature kinda thing. Then friends and family start dying in car accidents, and you start to realize how dangerous it really is. I'd say that the big thing is to just not get too nonchalant, always be aware of your surroundings and focus on the road. No matter how comfortable you are with driving. The future. And people asking me how I feel about something, because usually I have no clue how I feel about something, so I end up lying and just agreeing with them. It makes me feel so fake because everything I like and dislike generally based off of other people's opinion because I seriously just have zero clue how I actually feel about things. The only things I'm certain that I do and don't like are things like food and music. Everything else even things like my hobbies I generally can't figure out if I actually like doing it or if it's because I grew up around people whose hobbies were the same as my hobbies. I only just realized this too. This is pretty normal and common as a young person, but the only fix for this is not being ashamed of not having an opinion about something. Just because they've thought about it, and then put you on the spot, doesn't mean you should be ashamed of saying I don't know. Plus we learn by watching others, it's called observational learning so being interested in something, because you saw someone else do it doesn't make it any less yours so to speak. 
the thought of getting pregnant. I can't even count the number of nightmares I've had about this. The worst are the ones where I wake up, and am 8 plus months pregnant, and am about to be forced to give birth. Terrifying. Eyes contact. I don't know why, but when someone looks directly in my eyes, I will feel very uncomfortable and nervous. My hands will begin to sweat a lot, and my throat will feel like burning. My friends say that maybe it is, because I'm lying, or have done something wrong but it's not. When I talk to other people such as my teacher, friends, relatives, parents CTC, I often look at another spot in their face like ears, noses, mouth or else, certainly not eyes. The same goes with when I practice public speaking, or being awarded on the stage. I usually look at the ceiling or the clock or an empty space between audiences, rather than their eyes. I think it may be, because I'm scared of being judged, or being noticed too much, and I'm trying to fix it so hard. A tip I've heard to avoid becoming anxious slash self-conscious in our own head, is just to pay attention to what the other people are doing even more. Usually we just overdo it in our own minds to an irrational level. Well, there's a muscle in my body that works non-stop without me realizing it, and once it stops doing its thing, I die. I do two pull-ups and my arms want to explode all exhausted. We live in a complicated ecosystem where all sorts of plants and animals rely on each other to survive, and dozens of species go extinct every week. We live in a Goldilocks zone, the only place where life can survive. If the sun gets more or less intense, we all go into a global catastrophe. Also, I have eyeballs and I have no idea how they work. Fun facts. Eyes convergently evolved about 40 times. Octopuses don't have blind spots like vertebrates do, because their optic nerves are rooted behind the retina instead of in front. Owls cannot move their eyes, and must move their whole heads, because their eyes are cylinders instead of spheres, 